Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India hosts conclave of top security officials from Central Asian countries. At least seven killed after roadside bomb hits bus in Afghanistan's bulk. And World Bank approves Sri Lanka's concessional funding request. Now for all the details, India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Tuesday hosted the maiden meeting of the Security Council secretaries from Central Asian countries in New Delhi. Counter-terrorism and Afghanistan situation largely dominated the talks with top security officials calling for bilateral cooperation. India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Tuesday said, Financial support is the lifeblood of terrorism and greater priority should be accorded to counter-terror financing as he hosted his counterparts from Central Asian countries in New Delhi with an aim to evolve a common framework to confront major regional security challenges. Addressing his counterparts from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, Doval said, India accords Central Asia the highest priority, terming the region as the country's extended neighbourhood. He added, peaceful, secure and prosperous Central Asia is common interest and India stands ready to cooperate, invest and build connectivity in the region. Assistance of terrorist networks in the region, including in Afghanistan, is also a matter of deep concern. Financing is the lifeblood of terrorism and countering terror financing should be an equal priority for all of us. We should also call on all UN members to fulfill obligations enshrined in the relevant counter-terrorism conventions and protocols and refrain from providing any form of support to entities or persons involved in terrorist acts. Counter-terrorism and Afghanistan situation largely dominated the talks, with the top security officials calling for cooperation and agreeing that peace in Afghanistan will have impact in the region. They also agreed to develop measures to combat terrorism and drug trafficking. In 2021, India had hosted a regional dialogue on the situation in Afghanistan, which was attended by NSAs of Russia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. The Election Commission of Pakistan has set in motion the process to remove former Premier Imran Khan as chairman of opposition PTI party. The development comes after the poll body in October had disqualified Khan as the member of the National Assembly in Toshakana reference case for a false statement and incorrect declaration. The Election Commission of Pakistan, ECP, on Monday began the process to remove former Premier Imran Khan as chairman of PTI, the Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Party. ECP has issued a notice against PTI chief and hearing will take place on 13th of December, local media reported. The development comes after ECP in October disqualified Khan as a member of the National Assembly, evoking Constitution's Article 63-1 in Tosha Khana case. PTI party members have cautioned the legality of the notice and asserted that there is no provision in law which prohibits Khan from leading the party. The reference by PTI members was made to Election Act 2017, which did not retain the provision of disqualification as party's office bearer present in Political Party's Order 2002. However, in 2018, in a petition filed by Imran Khan, the Supreme Court had maintained person disqualified under Article 62 and 63 of the Constitution cannot hold office of a political party, leading to Nawaz Sharif's removal as the PMLN chief. 
PTI Vice Chairman Fawad Chaudhry accused the Commission of being biased against PTI, terming the move murder of justice. This comes as Imran Khan has been demanding fresh elections by March and has warned if the government fails to adhere, PTI will proceed with dissolution of assemblies in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Punjab, taking 66% of Pakistan to polls. Moving on, protest against Pakistani Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif erupted in Muzaffarabad on Tuesday after his verbal spat with Tanvir Ilyas, the PM of Pakistan, administered Kashmir. During a ceremony in Bangla on Monday, Ilyas reportedly complained to Sharif about not making a mention of the sacrifices of the people of the illegally occupied region. But Sharif was seen gesturing and asking him to retire to his seat. Scores of political activists and locals held a protest in Muzaffarabad on Tuesday against Pakistani Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif after his verbal spat with Tanvir Ilyas, the PM of Pakistan, administered Kashmir during a ceremony in Mangla on Monday. Addressing the inaugural ceremony of the refurbishment project of the Mangla Dam hydropower plant, Shahbaz was seen gesturing and asking Ilyas to retire to his seat. In the background, Ilyas could be heard complaining to Sharif about not making mention of the sacrifices of the people of the illegally occupied region. So I think this is the time that the Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir's ruling classes should also realize that there is no room for negotiation. The only way for POJK is to get independence from Pakistan. Pakistan has misruled the region for more than seven decades. There is a prime minister and president in Pakistan administered Kashmir, but they are deemed as mere stooges by locals and activists who claim the people in the region have no political rights and representation, although they are taxed heavily. In news from Afghanistan, at least seven people were killed on Tuesday when a blast hit a vehicle carrying oil workers in Afghanistan's northern Balkh province. The explosion struck a bus which belonged to Hyratan Oil employees, said a police spokesperson, adding that at least six people were wounded. The cause of the blast was not immediately clear and police said investigations are going on. Balkh province is home to one of Afghanistan's main dry ports in the town of Heratan, near the border with Uzbekistan, which has rail and road links to Central Asia. Well, the World Bank on Tuesday approved crisis hit Sri Lanka's request to access concessional financing from the International Development Association so as to help stabilize its economy. In a statement, the global lender said that financing would also alleviate debt service pressures as it offers more favorable terms. The World Bank on Tuesday said that it has approved Crisis at Sri Lanka's request to access concessional financing from the International Development Association, IDA, so as to help stabilize its economy. The world lender said in a statement that access to IDA's concessional financing would also elevate debt service pressures as it offers more favorable terms. The statement added that through the IDA, Sri Lanka will receive concessional financing, technical assistance and policy advice from the World Bank to implement reforms toward economic recovery. Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka, Ali Sabri, said that the country appreciates the World Bank's response. The reverse graduation to IDA will enable the country to access resources to help sustain institutions to become more resilient and responsive to needs of Sri Lankans, he said. Soaring inflation, a weakening currency and low foreign exchange reserves have left the island nation of 22 million struggling to pay for imports of essentials such as food, fuel and medicine. It has also been negotiating debt restructuring with creditors, a condition to secure a $2.9 billion IMF bailout package. Well, leaders of Nepal's ruling coalition on Monday held a meeting at PM Sher Bahadur Deba's residence and pledged unity as they decided to finalize the division of powers after the starting of the House sessions. Prime Minister Deba's Nepali Congress has emerged as the single largest party in the elections results so far. But the final poll outcome is expected in a few more days. Members of Nepal's five-party ruling alliance held a meeting at PM Sher Bahadur Deoba's residence in Kathmandu on Monday and pledged to move forward with greater unity in the coming days and to finalize the division of powers after the starting of the House sessions. 
issuing a joint statement, the coalition leader said the November 20 election has further justified the need and relevance of the coalition and called for its continuity. They also acknowledged that a lack of cooperation and understanding among the coalition partners was seen in some of the constituencies that will be resolved in the coming days. PM Deobas Nepali Congress has emerged as the single largest party in the election results so far. It will be a few more days before counting is completed. Nepal, a natural buffer between giant Asian rivals India and China, has changed governments 10 times since its 239-year-old monarchy was abolished in 2008. That instability has fueled corruption, hampering economic growth and slowed recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Moving on, Indian traders and local residents staged a protest and blocked the Indo-Nepal cross-border bridge in Tharchula on Monday following Sunday's stone pelting incident on the Indian workers by the Nepalese in the region. The protesters demanded the Nepal administration to take immediate action against the culprits who allegedly pelted stones and bait in charge by Nepal police during the construction of an embankment wall on River Kali. The river acts as the border between Nepal and India. The traders warned if action is not taken within three days, they will sit on a hunger strike. Indian officials said they will hold a meeting with the Nepal counterparts to resolve the issue and clear any misinformation. Our Nepal administration yesterday told us clearly that they have to take any strict action. And now we have been talking about the DM Madam, so in two days we will come here and we will have a meeting with the DM Madam and the CDO Sargi. मीटिंग होगी उसमें हम लोग क्लियर कट बता देंगे कि क्या क्या चीज़ें हैं क्या क्या उन्हें एक्शन लेना पड़ेगा एंड ये जो काम चल रहा है ये काम बिल्कुल कोऑपरेशन से ही होगा और ये काम भी डेफिनेटली पूरा होगा and a youngster from a farmer's family in India's northern Uttar Pradesh has invented a six-seater electric bike, winning praise on social media from people across the country. The boy was also praised by Indian billionaire businessman Anand Mahindra, who said he is always impressed by rural transport innovations. Asad Abdullah, a youngster hailing from a farming family in India's northern Uttar Pradesh, has invented a six-seater electric bike, winning praise on social media from people across the country. Asad used square metal tubes to make the strong chassis of the e-bike, which can hold a weight of six passengers and can cover 93 miles after being charged. He says he spent nearly around $120 to $180 to make the bike. Indian billionaire businessman and chairperson of Mahindra and Mahindra Company, Anand Mahindra, said on Twitter that he always gets impressed by rural transport innovations where necessity is the mother of invention. He said this innovation with just small design inputs could find global application. जी ये छह सीट वाली इलेक्ट्रिक बाइक बनाई है मैंने इसपे एक साथ छह लोग बैठ के कहीं भी आ जा सकते हैं और काफी दूर तक आ जा सकते हैं इसकी रेंज जो है डेढ़ सौ किलोमीटर के करीब है एक बार चार्ज होने में डेढ़ सौ किलोमीटर जाती है। The young inventor also said the rising prices of petrol made him brainstorm an economical transport alternative to help people in transportation. The innovation has piqued the interest of internet users and compliments have continued to pour in. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. India hosts conclave of top security officials from Central Asian countries. At least seven killed after roadside bomb hits bus in Afghanistan's bulk. And World Bank approves Sri Lanka's concessional funding request. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.